bato bato kibel bato betia adan 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 kibel bato betia In October, St. Lucia comes alive with Creole Heritage Month celebrations. During the period, traditional pastimes take center stage as St. Lucians make cultural connections to the way they dress, communicate, and of course, the ingredients and manner in which they cook their food. <laughs> The St. Lucia Business Unit of Lime, St. Lucia's premier telecommunications service provider, also participated in celebrating the island's cultural traditions through the first ever Lime Iron Chef Creole Cook-Off. Well, every year we do something special for Junior Creole at Lime. Um, this year we um, decided that instead of just the normal dress up and uh, you know the, the individual departments cooking maybe amongst themselves, we will actually have an Iron Chef Creole cookout. And so each department came together, nominated six chefs. Um, we selected a whole menu, including different dishes or uh, different groups of dishes for each department. And that's what we're executing here today. The cook-off formed part of the company's island-wide October promotion, Lime Upon Air, Lime in the Basket. Eight teams named after local flowers representing the various departments at Lime St. Lucia donned Madras-inspired t-shirts, Lime emblazoned aprons, and, in some cases, full chef outfits to do battle in their open-air kitchens. The event formed part of a host of activities planned by Lime to mark the observance of Creole Heritage Month. There's going to be music. Um, we are bringing in people from our denry and uh, for us or Junior Creole committees. Um, we're going to have some solo later. We're going to have some drumming. We're going to have, you know, the normal DJ activity as well. But uh, really, it's going to be uh, a big day of Creole fun. The level of enthusiasm and confidence displayed by the teams was extremely high, even those who had interpreted the theme a little differently. But dumpling yam and lamb sounds Chinese to me. <laughs> well, um, these days, boy, Creole, Chinese, you don't know. <laughs> My chances are number one. Number one. Yeah, number one. As you can see, we were here first. We sent our preparations first. I mean, our team members are together first. It's first. So we must come first. No power, we can't no power, no power. No can't get, no can't get. La panie alot pour ne can't get non. No bon. Oh dia, nous vin participer en Creole. Nous ca traitement hé ici à Jodia. Et moi même sav technologie ca descendre 1000 dollars ça la Jodia. Nous pas ca vini ici pour goumer pour pour gagner. Nous ca des sinon vini vini ici pour pour passer botte et puis et puis et puis kamawad nous et et faire mon wè. Nous ca tout manger tout. In making the announcement to staff, the event would be judged in several categories. Best dress, best presentation, best use of ingredients, biggest faux pas, and of course, the overall chef's grand prize of $1,000. The prize money is going to be decided by the judges, and there's a $1,000 prize money for the department which does the best. Um, it is something that we've done before in terms of um, actually giving prize money for our Junior Creole activity. As preparations got underway on the day of competition at the Open Air Kitchen Stadium, it was evident the participating teams had decided to put a lot of effort and energy into their overall presentations and final culinary offerings. Mm. 
there is a, a competition on for the best dressed uh, uh, team as well, the best dressed uh, tent as well. Uh, as you can see, we've put in the palm fronds uh, around each of the tents to give them that little feel, that authentic feel. So we've done our little bit and they are contributing with their madras and their various other bits and pieces. While the team's creole was not very strong, they made up for it in trying to sound fluent. Actuellement, I have a place to place. I have a place to place. I have a place to place. I have a place to You know, garde a place to place. I have a rustic. I have a place to place. Aujourd'hui, nous nous voulons préparer um, la tchèque cochon et puis poids rouge et domboué. Moi, ça me sert à bail, c'est l'ici et mes achats. Et puis, achats, nous avons fait ça pour un one pot, nous avons pris. Mais aussi, nous voulons ni farine et puis zaboka. Nous avons fait des boules et puis. Um, et châtain aussi. Châtain, c'est pas un bail qui a joué une commune encore. Mais nous, un châtain aujourd'hui et puis, moi, si un châtain, mon gars, il vient de goûter châtain. Nous avons préparé ce lame. Ati am bui dobwe lam e gati bwe ko am yoka kuye simos. So odi anu ka fe sa kwa tenu kwa pawe sa po tut mo enjoy ko nu. At the stroke of 12 midday, the culinary battle had begun to determine clearly whose cuisine would reign supreme. With an impressive array of local vegetables, greens, ground provisions, seasonings, condiments, and various meats, there was no shortage of variety in the dishes created in the Lime St. Lucia Iron Chef Creole Battle. There were secret ingredients and extra special cooking methods coming into play as the teams peeled, sliced, boiled, grated, boned, chopped, kneaded and stewed their way into Lime Iron Chef Creole history. The ingredients were centrally purchased and we've got to say thanks to, um, to, 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 to CFL for being a partner in this, CFL and Super J obviously being a big partner in this and helping us out with some of our ingredients um, and really coming on board in a big way. Meanwhile, the judges, Glenn Goodman, Philip Hinkson and Felix Hinkson had the enviable task of adjudicating the Iron Chef Creole cook-off. Their job was to choose the winning teams in the various categories and sample the dishes lovingly prepared by Lime's budding executive chefs. We've got chefs on hand, um, we've got professional chefs on hand who are going to be amongst our judges this afternoon. Um, but at the end of the day, really, the judging is going to be done, I guess, by their colleagues, by our colleagues, who are actually going to taste what is the outcome of today's activity. Remember you eat with your eyes and your nose, okay? And if the plate looks presentable to the judges and the food tastes good, then we judge them from there. They're going to present us with a plate mm -hmm. of what they, they use. We're going to ask them what were the ingredients in it. And then we judge it, we judge it based on what we taste. I'm here to, I guess, taste and see what the, the, the different departments came up with, basically. Yeah. Yeah, but you said with taste, so that means... Uh... <laughs> no official taste, basically. That's what, that's what my role is supposed to be here. After a full day of slaving over coal pots and other ICDs, improvised cooking devices, the teams plated and presented their dishes for judging. The judges would give no hints about their preferences as they made the rounds of the departmental kitchens, tasting their way to an overall winner. There were questions from the judges and explanations from the participants in English and Creole. Now the bouillon is um, pigtail. Um, yeah, the bouillon is pigtail with red beans. Of course, we garnish it with all sorts of seasoning. It's not Papa nous take a travail. Là, il vient à Kaila. Tout là, maman nous take à mettre manger à quoi ça balie. Il pas tenu pour faire hier. Il tenu tic à nous. Il grow là pour laver la main. Avant il commençait à manger et clarité là pour ça. So, fait bien ou après ça. As the judges deliberated, the Lime Empire staff celebration continued with teams sampling each other's dishes and entertainment from a local cultural group from Chasse Babono. There was even someone putting on a one-woman fashion show. Who are you wearing? Oh, <laughs> Dan Cherubin. Oh, Dan Cherubin? Yes. Um, no, no, he's not from Lime. No, no. He's a designer, yes. Okay, and well, of course, it's like I said, it's sack, but in the inner parts, it's lined. So it's not, I don't have to worry about the itching or anything. But it's lined. And now the time to announce the prizes was finally at hand. The judges were very, very impressed by what they saw 
this, um, well, throughout the course of today, in terms of the preparation, the setup of the various tents, um, everything that went in, they asked us to just say a special word on their behalf to all of you and to congratulate you and ask you to applaud yourself for a tremendous effort. Best dress is, is cooperatives. Give them a round of applause. The next award is for best tastes. And this one was actually very, very hotly contested. We spoke with the judges. As you can see, they took quite a while to deliberate. They went around to, the, to each of the tents a couple of times. And eventually, coming away with the best taste was tent number three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dandelion, <laughs> service delivery, best taste. The best use of items goes to... Deandro, please. Regional. Ah. <laughs> the biggest faux pas goes to tent number four, <laughs> Team Marketing. The winner of the chef's prize of $1,000 went to corporate sales, as predicted by team leader Donald Dorius. One thing that I must say is that we worked very, very hard. We came in very early. We, pre we prepared our ingredients, um, we work as a team. And throughout the, throughout the experience, we, we, we tasted our food to make sure there's consistency is what we prepared. <laughs> quite, aside, quite, aside from, yeah, quite aside from looking good, we prepared everything thoroughly. And as you can see, our booth, number one, was the first to finish, right? right. Was the first to taste, was the first in everything. First and, finish, you know, more, more specifically, what, what most people enjoyed was the, um, the sows. Oh, yes. Yes, you know, the bread footballs. But, but, but most of all, you know, our team, Birds of Paradise, we worked together throughout the entire, um, you know, experience. But, but as, as Ricky rightfully said, we are all winners, but we are the overall winner. And so ended the first ever Iron Chef Creole Battle at Lime's Corinth Kitchen Stadium. Next year, the competition will be tougher and even more delicious. More importantly, St. Lucia's Creole traditions will live on for the next generation to enjoy.